Hello and welcome back to Speculative Dude Reviews. I'm your host, Speculative Dude. Now, this week we're going to be talking about uh, the most recent entry in the X-Men series, X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, I'm not going to lie, I really, even though I wanted to try and uh, not have too high expectations going in, I, I found myself getting excited for it, not only after the, you know, the trailer, after uh, Wolver the Wolverine from last year, but uh, there's just so much, there's been so much hype behind it. Some people have said that's a detriment to some of the X-Men movies because there's a lot of hype and then it comes out as ending up being not, just not quite living up to it. But personally, I've liked the X-Men movies, some better than others. I don't think any of them were horrendous, but, uh, you know, maybe they were all great. You know, uh, but... For anyone who knows the at least the original the first three movies, is was that uh, you know there were some continuity issues. It was that a lot of people wanted to try and clear up. Some people thinking that X Men First Class were going to clear those up, uh, and mm, pretty much didn't. And, uh, thereby introducing an entirely new line. Again, some people thought that that meant they were going to take off from there and do another X Men series. Instead, bringing in uh, Days of Future Past to rewrite the entire timeline. Essentially, all three of the first movies have never happened now. You know, uh, what's, the back, what's the main story? In the future, Sentinels have pretty much taken over. Uh, they, used, uh, uh, they used a system that was developed from uh, Mystique's cellular structure her to, er, and her ability to adapt and change to... You, and create technology that would allow the Sentinels to adapt and change it, thereby making them considerably more powerful. Now, uh, that's, I mean, that's an interesting thought, uh, thereby making them, again, virtually, you know, close to being indestructible. I mean, not completely, but pretty darn close. Uh, you know, in the future, not only are mutants persecuted, I think most people who know the Sentinels, they were programmed to attack, attack mutants, but they were also eventually started being able to identify which normal humans would give birth to to mutant offspring. And I believe they even said at one point even, you know, their grandchildren would be. And so thereby they started attacking, you know, many, many more. Uh, thereby completely, you know, not only a, you know, destroying what they were originally created for, or uh, when they were supposed to protect normal humans, but also you know, eventually in time, destroying, mo you know, killing most people. Uh, I really like the opening f uh, fight scene when they show, uh, you know, they eventually show how the future is working in a manner of speaking, and it also gives the premise for the, the time travel aspect of the movie. Uh, I didn't, wasn't really a big fan of the, the fact that they gave Shadowcat this ability to send, well, they used Bishop initially, uh, Anytime they're going to get attacked by Sentinels, uh, they uh, Shadowcat uses an ability to uh, send his mind back into essentially the younger version of himself uh, and uh, warn of the upcoming attack so they would have time to leave. Uh, they're also, thereby, uh, by the time the timeline catches up to where they are, they will have already left. The Sentinel attack will not have you know will not have happened. Um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting dynamic on a time travel story. Uh, I'm not going to say this is perfect time travel, you know, by any means, but I think at least from a story aspect, it's better than most. Uh, especially when you have characters that you know, will remember. They even uh, eventually, uh, that you know, once uh, Professor Xavier. You know, they find out... Actually, again, giving Shadowcat that ability didn't make a whole lot of sense other than giving her something to do. Um, I mean, no offense, but she's not exactly the most interesting character in a fight scene. So, whereas, you know, the other mutants, Blink, uh, Warpath, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Iceman, and, uh, and Bishop, they all, you know, they all have combat, sort of more combat-related powers, and... Like I said, she, I mean, she passed, she phases through walls, which is cool, but like I said, again, not the most interesting to watch in a fight. Uh, uh, in doing that, 
Uh, they, so they basically, I think they gave her this ability just so she would have more to do, so Ellen Page would have more to do in the movie. Because uh, otherwise, I mean, and even then, she pretty much just stands over, most of the movie she's standing over Wolverine going like this, trying to keep his mind in the past. It's not, it still doesn't do a whole lot, but that's, you know, putting that aside. Honestly, there's really not that much of the future shown in the movie. Um, there's some, but not, not as, definitely not as much as I expected. I expected more interaction between the future and the past. And it didn't happen, at least not to the extent I hoped for. But it was actually done fairly well, so I can't really complain too much. Um, essentially, when uh, Professor Xavier and uh, Magneto show up and you know to where the resistance is, is and they they explain that you know how they escape the Sentinels each time that they send Bishop's mind back, you know, so he can warn them and they can move. Um, you know, he comes up with the idea of, well, could you send someone back to before the war started? And she says that she doesn't think she could because the strain would be too much. Uh, you know, just like she's like, I could send someone back a couple weeks, maybe a month, but beyond that, you know, and so Wolverine just says, well, what if your mind heals? You know, what if you heal? And essentially, I mean, it does make sense. It's he is the only one who could physically handle going back in time. Uh, because of the strain that it had put on him. Uh, so he gets, uh, he gets sent back to 1973. And I really, honestly, I flat out really like, uh, the period piecing was done really well. You know, they were very good on the details. Uh, uh, it's, as soon as, uh, you know, Wolverine steps out of the apartment where he wakes up, because he wakes up in his younger body, which, you know, for Wolverine really isn't that much different, but... But he doesn't have his adamantium yet, so that that was a big thing. There's even a joke later when he walks through a metal detector, expects it to go off, and it doesn't, and then he you know he kind of realizes, oh yeah, I don't have that yet, and he just kind of like, oh okay. So that was that was a little minor amusement there. Um, uh, he steps out of the apartment where he wakes up, and uh, and is dressed, you know, he's you know, he he puts on the clothes of your of his younger self, and it's exactly what I would have thought that he would be wearing. It's like, if I were to say, think, you know, what would Wolverine be wearing back in the 70s, this was exactly it. It's, you know, in fact, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things, it's like, when you think of a character, what would they, you know, when it, as a comic fan, what would they probably do or look like or act in the situation? I think they nailed a lot. You know, I'm not going to say it's perfect, but they did a lot quite well, like I said. I think this was exactly this was exactly what I would have expected Wolverine to look like, you know, in the seventies. Uh, you know, there's uh, basically they have to go back. He has to go back in the past. And what started the war was Mystique killing uh, Bolivar Trask, played by Peter Dinklage. Uh, you know, and that instead of stopping, uh, he said he was setting up a program with the initial Sentinel program to track down mutants. Uh, and in, in this version, uh, uh, when, when, he ki when she kills him, instead of stopping the research, it actually progresses it. People see that, okay, he was taken out by a mutant, therefore they must really be as big a threat as he claimed they were. And it progresses his, his, uh, his stance. And his, well, oh, that, that actually does make a very interesting point, because they go, they essentially they go and stop they go to try and stop uh, her. Uh, Charles is there. They're still using the storyline where he grew up with Mystique uh, from you know, from their childhood, uh, from from X Men First Class. Never really liked that storyline idea, but I, you know, I think it's obvious they're going to stick with it. But so you know, okay. Basically, what I didn't like more than anything else was I didn't like the heel turn she does at the end of X Men First Class, even though it was obvious that. Uh, you know, Charles didn't love her and have the same feelings. It didn't make a whole lot of her sense to just completely 180 and ally with Magneto as quickly as she did. That's even though yes, he accepted her. It's like I said, it just didn't feel normal. I mean, it, it felt very like I said, it felt very rushed. You know, they could have shown they could have shown more, but okay, this isn't about X Men First Class. 
Uh, but essentially, you know, she's been with Magneto. She's gotten the idea that, you know, killing is the way to, you know, to preserve. So she thinks killing Trask will do it, not knowing, obviously, that it's actually going to set off a chain reaction, which will make things worse. Uh, Wolverine goes back, tells, uh, you know, tells Xavier what's going on. Uh, has to convince him of... And it takes him a little while. He doesn't. He doesn't believe him immediately. Uh, Professor Xavier has been using a, uh, a mutant suppress or a, a suppressant gene uh, or therapy, um, a drug essentially, to to relieve the pain in his back that was caused by his spinal the spinal damage, which caused him not to walk. Which uh, McCoy is. I wasn't a big fan of that idea, but I. I you know, again, they're probably going to keep using that example in the uh, in the in this movie series. But uh, what what happens is by using it, it causes you know heals some of the spinal damage so that he can walk again. But it suppresses his uh, you know telepathic ability. Uh, so you know he can't. Like even Wolverine says, you know, if you had your powers, you could you could read my mind and you'd know it was true. And later he does, and uh, you know he you know, he acknowledges. You know, Wolverine. And there's an interesting meeting of the minds later. Uh, Patrick Stewart in the future and him in the past having a conversation and, you know, him in the past not knowing what to do and, him, and himself in the future trying to give his past self the courage to try and, you know, to do what needs to be done. Uh, I just thought it was really good. You know, I was like, okay, that was good. Uh, it, you know, they... Overall, the, the series is great, or the... The, the characters are well done. Uh, Jeff Lawrence, again, is returning as Mystique. Uh, so I think she does a fantastic job. Uh, she wasn't in it as much as I expected. Uh, but then again, uh, thinking about, uh, even in the original three movies, uh, Mystique, while she was there, was in a transformed state a good chunk of the time. And that's, that's what happens here. It's like Mystique is technically there, but she's transformed uh, into someone else, morphed so, to someone else, so to speak. Uh, so she's not Mystique, he's, she's Mystique disguised as, you know, and that's, you know, it's like, okay, that works. Um, like I said, uh, she wasn't in it as much as she was in X-Men First Class, so if you're expecting to see that, you, you won't. Um, uh, there are once, unfortunately, the problem is Magneto is very fatalistic in that Charles believes that uh, since she spent time with Magneto, that Magneto might be able to convince her that killing him is the wrong wrong idea. Not really thinking that, or re not really remembering that Magneto, uh, well, <laughs> you know, his idea is to kill everybody who doesn't agree with him, pretty much. He claims, you know, he claims he was going to, you know, he claims he's trying to free people, but at the same time, anyone that gets in his way, or if he sees it, it's very, boom, you know, you're, you're gone. As soon as he, you know, they catch up with Mystique, just about to kill, you know, Trask, you know, and you know they stop her, and Charles is trying to talk her down. She's not necessarily agreeing with it, so he picks up the gun, is about ready to kill her, and says, "Well, you know, if you're the one who causes our problem to be this, you know, living hell, then you know, killing you might solve the problem," and they have to stop that. So it's like, whoa, okay, whoa, 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 you know, it, there's just it ends up being it, it ends up playing out very nicely. Uh, at the end, uh, again, Peter Dinklage does a great job as Bol Bolivar Trask. Uh, I think he's, I think he's an excellent actor. Uh, I think he's been underestimated for a long time. I think with Game of Thrones, people have come to acknowledge that he's a great actor, and this just showcases it even more. Uh, again, uh, you have, uh, uh, you have Hugh Jackman, who's here, he, and he, interestingly enough, he carries the story, but unlike, say, some of the other, uh, the, the, we'll just say the first three X-Men movies, this isn't really his story, whereas X-1, 2, and 3 really were kind of all about him, and don't get me wrong, I like it, it, it you know, Wolverine is easily my favorite Marvel character, but uh, I understand why some people, it bothered them a little bit, it's like, okay, there wasn't enough focus on the other characters. Here, this one, even though Wolverine carries the story and he is supposed to be sort of a mentor, in a way, going back and having this knowledge of the, of the future, uh, the, you know, he, it really allows Mystique and Xavier to really be the focal points of the movie. Uh, 
Charles having having to come to grips with you know you know coming to grips with his power and what he can do in a in a manner of speaking and um, Mystique you know trying to decide what is the right thing to do you know questioning herself everything she's been you know and then Charles also acknowledging that you know when they were together at growing up that maybe he I don't want to say sheltered her too much but he didn't he she looked to him almost as someone she would fall in love with and he always tr sort of acted like she was his sister but more tried to be more protective more like a parent yeah, it's it, so you know he has to come to acknowledge that he never you know he shouldn't have you know he shouldn't have treated her like that he, you know he never gave her you know he has to acknowledge that he should have you know allowed her to be herself instead of trying to you know and I think that I think that's good in a in a very you know character development wise was really good. Um, Magneto really doesn't get any character development. He doesn't change much throughout the movie. At the beginning, you think he might, uh, you know, he might have some attitude change and that. And very quickly, you realize no, he's the still he's the same Magneto. You know, from uh, threatening you know at the end, you know, he threatens Richard Nixon and uh, you know. You know, and he's going to, you know, he's, he's going to kill, you know, some people to set an example. You know, and, you know, he's, you know, has no, no, no qualms about it until Xavier and Mystique interfere. Uh, just an interesting, you know, just very interesting how it's done. Uh, I really, like I said, as far as time travel stories, this is one of the better, in my opinion. Uh, the best part coming at the very end, not only is there the ripple effect that changes the future for the better... Uh, you know, you get to see Cyclops and Gene, because obviously those things never happened in the past, so they're still alive. Um, but you have to realize that uh, once he's been brought up to the future, he's got this memory gap. You know, the professor even asks him, what, what's the last thing you remember? And he was drowning. Well, Magneto knocked him into the river, you know, threw, ran some metal through his body and threw him in a river, and he couldn't swim out, so he, he drowned. Uh, well, he was later... Later came back and recovered, and you know it's it's Wolverine pretty much. <laughs> Once he may die, but pretty much as soon as he's put in a normal situation, he'll his body will recover. Uh, but uh, the the best part though was that in a time travel story, it's often forgotten that when you go in, pa in the past and make contact with these people, these people still have knowledge of you being there. So you realize at this point that. Charles, and, and before it's over, Wolverine asks him, he says, you helped me in the future at one point. Please come find me again and do that. And do that again. And that's, I think that's very good because, you know, if the future changes enough, maybe they would never meet. So he asks him. So in a way, that gives Charles a memory of like, okay, this is a guy I need to know in the future. But the best thing about it is you realize that now, for the next 40 years, Charles has this memory of Wolverine back in the 70s, and he can't say anything to him about it. At least not until he catches up to the point, to the proper point in time. And he comes in, and, uh, and he's, you know, he's disoriented, he doesn't know what's happening, you know, the school is back together, everything seems to be, seems to be fine. And, you know, and, uh, Professor says, you know, don't you have a class? Is a, is a class, is history. And he says, I might need a little help with that. And he and Professor looks at him and he says, with what? He says, pretty much everything after 1973. And you realize that he has no gap. And that's when you see the look on the Professor's face and, and it's like, and that's when you realize, because the Professor, he has knowledge of Wolverine's story, but he never knew anything. And at that point, when he realizes it, that Wolverine has caught up with his former self, and that all this timeline, he realizes that all this timeline has in fact changed. And I thought that was very good. And he just says, you're back. And it's, it's, it's something that's overlooked in a, lot of, you know, in a lot of time travel stories. That the person not only, you know, even though they know this other person, can't tell them until they reach the point. And it was just, re I just thought that that came off really well. Uh, there's, you know, the, key, the people who played the X-Men, uh, even though the future setting is mostly action scenes, uh, the people who played it were, did very well, except Warpath, 
uh, Blink, uh, trying, to, trying to remember who else is in there, uh, uh, Bishop, you know, they all did really well, um, they, you know, they got their powers accurate, and, uh, Colossus, you know, I don't know how I could read Colossus, um, still wish I could see Colossus in a little bit more of the movie, <laughs> he's, he's, he's another one of my favorite, you know, characters, but he's, you know, he's very underutilized in the movies, uh, but, you know, overall, you know, really, really well done. Halle Berry does come back as Storm, but she's in very little of it. I guess apparently she was pregnant when they were filming, so they they, they couldn't really use her for much. Uh, you know, uh, and when you think about it, in the future, uh, you know, Eric and Charles, you know, Magneto, Magneto and Professor X, they, you know, they really don't have a lot to do in the movie, uh, although Magneto does, due to his powers, try and go out and uh, stop the Sentinels just to keep, protect Wolverine's body while his mind is in the past. And it's, you know, it, just like I said, as far as time travel movies go, probably one of the better ones I've seen. Uh, they, it, it seems like they at least tried to think these things, a lot of things out. I liked it. Uh, you know, what can I say? <laughs> so that's, you know, that's my opinion on uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. Uh, Coming up soon, I will be uh, talk, going back to the racing movies for a little while. Uh, my next one will actually be an American racing movie. Uh, no, not, not the Fast and Furious series. Uh, it will actually be a racing movie called Born to Race. So, I'll look forward to that. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll get some good movies out here. Uh, got a little while before the next uh, my next uh, theatrical review, and that, that'll be uh, Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. You know, we'll see what happens there. Er, but, uh, you know, for now, that's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Speculative dude, out.